Jesus' name. joining us thank you for joining us let's get our likes and shares done please like and share the videos please like and share the videos man we're so thankful to have you on board have you a part of our evangelistic team amen uh, let's please like and share the videos we thank you for doing that we thank you for doing that for being a part of what God is doing in our lives uh, when I say our I'm talking mine and yours hallelujah Yes, Lord. Amen. Good morning, good morning. Good morning, Minister Martha. Good morning, Manisi Kawana. Minister Merchant, God bless you. To all of our all of our listeners on our dial-in line, we thank God for you. We thank God for you, man. We're so excited about uh, what God is doing in your life, man. It's amazing to be together. Um, I pray that you are thankful for the broadcast. Listen, please, please support the broadcast. Um, support the broadcast. Broadcast. You can cash out. Dollar sign C is too small. What we got going on? Okay, maybe we're back. Amen. 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 It's just like we're experiencing some connections problems on our Facebook end. So we pray that um that we uh we don't have much disruption today. We've got some inclement weather that looks like it's trying to roll in on us, and uh, so uh let's uh let's pray that God will give us. Um, grace to complete our broadcast today. Amen. Listen, I'm so thankful for you. I bless God for you. Um, I'm good. I had an early morning workout this morning, so my energy level is a, is a little bit pressed, uh, but thank God that uh, that he is. He's a wonderful God and he gives us uh, strength to endure. Amen. Strength to endure. Listen, um, I'm super excited about what God is doing um, in your life right now. Um, okay. Thank you, Jen. Thank you, Jen. Hey, my daughter. How you doing? Overseer Petway, good to see you. Listen, yesterday, you know, we were in this month. Good morning, Minister Poe. Bless you, son. Miss you and the family. I know you're off on your assignment at home, but we thank God for you. Um, listen, we, we, we have been um, looking at this month of Adar. It's the month of foundations or the month of establishment. Um, it's the month of... Uh, the six and the 12 position where you've got to have some things rooted and grounded in your life. You need to have some foundational things in your life. And so um, we need to make sure that we have um, a solid foundation, which is Christ Jesus, that we are building upon. Remember, we left off yesterday. Uh, we talked about the definition of foundation, that it wasn't just about the physical building. But it was also the underlying basis or principle of a thing. It's the core values of a thing. It's what motivates you, what, what drives you as a minister, 
what drives you as a ministry, what drives you as an individual, what drives you as a member of the family. Um, what, 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 what is the core value of your family? What's the core value of your job? What is the foundation of your, of your, uh, moral belief, your moral belief system? Um, um, you got to understand that the found, the foundation is so important to the building because what you're building and what you're creating cannot be done without proper foundation. And so yesterday, I think we left off. Yeah, we left off in first Peter, the first chapter. Verse 20, First Peter, the first chapter, verse 20. Remember, we began to talk about um, our lifestyle, being holy as he is holy, um, how we live, how we move, how we have our being. And we began to talk about how that, and, and Minister Martha, you can go ahead and place this up for me just as a reference. First Peter, the first chapter, verses 13 through 23. First Peter 1, 13 through 23. And we began to talk about how that God foreordain some things before the foundation of the world that are being manifested right now. And so what we're moving in right now is revelation that had its foundation in the mind of Christ. Everything you're becoming, that's why one of my favorite sayings is the me, here's a morism, the me that I'm becoming is the me that I already am in the mind of Christ. The me that I'm becoming is the me that I already am in the mind of Christ. Um, we got to understand that everything we're becoming, God has not only thought it out, but he has willed it out. Everything that you're becoming now is, is everything that God desires that you be. Even through your good times and your bad times, you are still in the development process of becoming all that God wants you to be. And so the foundation of your belief system should be the will of God. I want you to consider today, uh, make a note of this for me, Minister Martha, um, in, in Ephesians, the second chapter, Ephesians, the second chapter, Ephesians 2, amen. Good morning. Good morning, Mother Naomi. Uh, Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 10. Ephesians 2, verses 4 through 10. Verse 10 says, watch this, for we are his workmanship created in Christ Jesus unto good works, which be, which God had before ordained that we should walk in them. We are his workmanship. This word workmanship here uh, 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 comes from the word poema. Poema, it means that which, watch this, has been made. It is a past tense um, um, noun neuter. What it means is it, it, it is a noun of, of, that has already taken place. Um, um, it comes from, a, from the verb tense, which means to fashion or to make a thing. But, but in this context of being um, his workmanship, we are in a noun neuter state. In, in the poema, it means it, that which has been made. So even when we talk about his workmanship, what we see being create, what, I'm sorry, what we see actualizing right now has already been made in the mind of Christ. It has been made in Christ Jesus. So everything I'm becoming is everything that I already am. And you have to hold to some foundational beliefs that God knows what he's doing. He knows what he's working in your life. You are not an incident, an accident. You are, you are a divine creation of God, though born in a fallen state. He has a process by which he's going to reconcile you to himself and restore you to your original design. The me that I'm becoming is the me that I already am in the mind of Christ. And therefore, since I am created, watch this, and I tell you to always pay attention to how, to how the, the scripture handles things. Remember, Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Remember that I told you there, there, there are different dimensions. Lord, Lord speak, speaks to his, his authority, his kingship, his rulership. Savior speaks to Calvary, that he came and died for his people's sins. 
Jesus speaks to his humanity, uh, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. And he, he didn't get the name Jesus until he came into the earthly realm, right? And then Christ, the anointed one, his anointing is the is is the the one that influences the Jesus and causes the rulership and led him to Calvary. So you got to understand they all work together, but you have to know how they appear in Scripture. In this context, it's Christ Jesus. It's the anointing first, and then the flesh. All right, it's the anointing first. And then the humanity. So when he says we're created under good works in Christ Jesus, he says the anointing must be foundational to your human, to your human development. Hallelujah. Christ Jesus, not Jesus the Christ. Jesus Christ would put humanity in the first position. But no, Christ Jesus puts the anointing in the first position. And therefore, everything we work on and everything we're doing should be out of the, should be out of the anointing that overrides our flesh. All right? So in 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 20, we saw, watch this, that things are manifesting now for us. And we have this now, this new unfeigning love. We have this purity of heart. We want to be walk, walking this life out under the influence and direction of the Holy Spirit. He must be foundational to our lives. Now, why is this important? Why is it important that the Holy Spirit love through you? Why is it important that the Holy Spirit show mercy through you? It's important that you understand that because what you've got to understand is that sometimes, watch this, your will will move contrary to the will of God. Okay, you've been living more than, day, more than a day. You know that at times your will is not his will. You know that at times your flesh will rise up and cause you or want you, desire you to do things that are not of his will. And, and, and it's not always, you know, most of the times we go to we go to the 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 the, the, the super the super deep stuff, but it ain't even the super deep stuff. Sometimes it's just having enough faith to believe. Because the scripture says, whether whether we eat meat or don't eat meat, watch this. Uh, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. So if you don't, have, so if it's not tied to your faith, then it's then it's then it's contrary to the will. It's sin. And so what we've got to understand. Good morning, bro. What we got to understand is, watch this. That that we have to allow Holy Spirit inside of us. See, for so long we've made watch this. We made holiness what we do instead of holiness being who he is in us. Let me say this again. We've made holiness what we do instead of holiness being who he is within us. That's a gigantic different mindset. That's a gigantically different paradigm. It's not just about the actions I take. It's about the spirit that lives within me. Because watch this. There's a lot of people who appear to be taking right actions, but it's not of the spirit of God. Let me just let me just let me walk you through this today. It, it's a lot of people that love. Watch this. And they do things that appear to be much more loving than even believers, but they're not in Christ. So is it really agape love, the love of God, or is it just phileo, brotherly love? They do it because it's philanthropic. They do it because they get a tax break at the end of the year. They do it for, for other motivations other than purely just expressing the love of God because God lives in and through them. So we got to understand this. Watch this, that it's not just about the actions we take. It's about the spirit, the intent, and the power within us that causes us to do so. So when he says, as he did in First Peter, as he did in First Peter one, um, 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 in First Peter one, um, let me see which verse do I want to look at. Mm. Yes, in First Peter one, uh, verse fifteen, he says, "But he which hath called you is holy, so be ye holy in all manner of conversation." So watch this. There's a difference. Watch this. 
between my justified position and my manifested walk. Let me, let me stress you on this. There's a difference between my justified position and my manifested walk. It's, it's, it's these major biblical concepts, and I'm going to start a class real soon. I don't see my book, but I'm going to start, a, I'm going to start a, a class real quick through KLM Ministries that we're going to do called All the Doctrines of the Bible. And I'm going to give you an opportunity to walk with me and study some foundational class. Now, this is going to be a paid class. It's not going to be in our normal um, 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 inspire section. But what we're going to do is we're going to walk you through some major doctrines to get your understanding where you need to be. Who is God for real? Who is the Holy Spirit for real? Who, who is Jesus Christ for real? What does sanctification holiness really mean? How do we work through those doctrinal issues so that we learn how to practice it in our life? Because there's a difference between my justification and my sanctification, what I'm justified in and what I'm actualizing. See, watch this. I can be holy because God has positioned me and made me right, but I still have this controversy of conversation, how I'm going to live. See, watch this. One of the things my mama used to tell me, she, she, she used to say this, and she, she, boy, I tell you, my mother could counsel me, and I'd be like, mama, go on, just go and beat me. Just go and whoop me, because if you whoop me, it'll be okay, but, but this counsel you've given me, this sitting me down across the table is killing me. <laughs> but she had that kind of influence on us in our lives. So watch this. She would say to me, you're better than this. In other words, your behavior is not matching up to the character that I know you have. You're better than this. You don't have to lower yourself to that standard. There's a standard I've set as a family. There's a standard I've set for you as my son. I have an expectation of you, and I expect that you're going to live a certain way. Let me tell you something. God has the same expectation. He says, be ye holy. For he that has called you is holy. He says, I expect you to be like me. But watch this. My expectation is not that you do it on your own. My expectation is that you yield yourself to me and allow me to live through you. See, you can't love right unless the lover of all lives is loving through you. You don't have enough mercy unless you have he that created the mercy seat that lives through you. You don't have enough anointing unless you have the apothecary of heaven, the, the, the Lord of Lord and King of Kings working through you. You ain't got nothing without him. And so he says, watch this, watch this. Be ye holy for I am holy. So watch this. Your justification and your conversation can be in conflict with one another. God can position you rightly in him and then you can, by your own volition, refuse to live it out. Yes, you can. It's called carnality. You're living after the flesh. Now watch this. I wanted to turn your attention. I wanted to turn your attention. I wanted to turn your attention to, to Philippians, the second chapter, watch this, verse 12, Philippians 2, 12 and 13. Our, our, our labor, our labor is to believe. Our labor is to trust God to work through us. But I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, watch this, hear me clearly, who have, watch this, pseudo-righteous behavior, and they don't know the God of righteousness. Let me say it again. They have pseudo righteous behavior. They have a false sense of righteousness, but they really don't know God. If your righteousness is not rooted and grounded and foundationally coming from Christ and you've created your own form of righteousness, you in, a, in effect have, be, have perverted righteousness and you are now unrighteous. You can't say that ain't right and it doesn't agree with scripture. Make sure that you're rooted and grounded in the word of God. You've been redeemed by the blood of Christ and you are now saved and sanctified through the word of God. But it's in our yielding that we have our best and most effective Christian life. Watch this. Watch this. 
Philippians 2, verses 12 through 13 says, Wherefore, my beloved, and I know, notice here the word beloved. Beloved here comes from the word um, uh, um, agapetos, agapetos, which comes from the word agape, which means the recipients, the agapetos is an adjective that describes those who have received the love of Christ, the love of God. You've been adopted into the family now. He gave you the gift and you received it through salvation. You are the beloved of God now. So when we call you beloved, it means that you are in the family. You are saved. You are a person of the way. You are a Christian. You are following after the tenets, teachings, and disciplines of Christ. You are now a believer. The agape toast. He said, the beloved. He said, wherefore, my beloved, as ye have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now how much more in my absence Work out your own salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God, watch this, which worketh in you, God, which worketh, watch this, watch this, now watch this, there, there are several different words that apply to work, not, and, and this word is not the ergon, which means to work, or your employment, this word is the inner gale. Inner gale. The inner gale means, watch this, it is operative in your life. It means to be at work or to put forth the power of a thing. It is, it, watch this, it means to have an effect or to display one's activity. Okay? It means to aid or to work. It means there's something on the inside. Watch this, watch this. It does you no good. To have a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful car with no engine. Listen, it does you no good to have have a 2020 Genesis. I mean, a, a Hyundai um, um, Genesis. Let's go with that for a second. I hope there's no Genesis drivers on the on the line. Let's say you've got a beautiful 2020 Hyundai Genesis. But it skipped a major portion of the assembly line. It didn't go through the motor shop, the engine shop. So it went through the paint shop. It went through the, 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 the assembly shop that put on the doors and the windows and the tires. And, and the conveyor belt kept pushing it. But, but when it was supposed to go through the engine shop, it missed that step. And we rolled it off the end. We rolled it off the end, off the end of the assembly belt. And watch this, all of a sudden, it doesn't crank, it doesn't run, it has nothing to power it. It looks beautiful, but it has no effect. This is the nature of the inner gale. God says, watch this, that it, Paul says, watch this, it is God that worketh in you. Listen, if the power of God foundationally is not working in and through you, then you're not really a believer. And, I, and, I, and it's hard for me to say that to you, but you got to understand, you need the power of Holy Ghost working in and through you. He is the engine to your justification, sanctification, salvation, everything that is good. He is working in you both to will and to do of his good pleasure. He must be the driver. God is not your co-pilot. He's your engine. Come on, somebody. Watch this. It is his. It is him. Watch this. Who is the, the powerhouse, the power source of two major things, your willing and your doing. To will the thing. Watch this. He says both to will. Watch this. And I'm getting to my teaching. I'm not even to the real teaching yet. But both to will, that means to have your mindset, to have your will, to have the intent, to give you the determination, to give you the desire, to give you the love of even his desire so that, watch this, once you learn to love what he loves, then you can do what he does. See, love agape must become love agapeo. That is the noun to the verb Form. The love you have once you receive the love of God as a gift, it then must become an active source of giving in your life so that you give away that same love. It's the agape and the agapeo. 
your noun must turn to verb. He says, I'm going to give you the will, the mind, the desire. And, and watch this. And I'm going to also give you, watch this, the inner gill. The inner gill. So watch this. The same word, watch this, and you got to see this. The same word for worketh, which is what God is doing in your life, the inner gale. He's working and operative in your life inside of you. It's the same Greek word, inner gale, that is the word that, 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 that means the phrase to do. So what God, why, oh, thank you, Jesus. What God wants to do to you, he now wants to do through you. What God wants to do to you, be the power source in your life, he now wants to do through you, become the power source of other people's lives. And it says it's going to all be of his good pleasure, his will, his choice, to his satisfaction. To his satisfaction. I'm talking foundations now. You foundationally cannot do what you think is right. You foundationally cannot do what you will to do. He says, I want to be the active power source within you that causes you to get your mind and your heart right to become what I want you to become and allow me to work with you as an active power source in all of your actions to please myself in your life. Listen, you, listen, listen, we got, listen, I'm going to mess with your mind for a second. We say this all the time. Lord, I just want to please you. Lord, I just want to please you. You know what you need to do? Yield. Yield and allow him to please himself through you. It's the power of Holy Ghost. Listen, you're not good enough. You're not nice enough. You're not holy enough. You'll never be enough. You cannot achieve enough. The only thing you can do is yield and allow him to be your enough. Allow him to be your enough. Can I tell you this? Your nasty attitudes, your bouts with anger, your frustrations, that all lies on you. That's not the will of God for your life. He says, I want you to be kindly, benevolent. I want some pleasure in your life because that's my good pleasure. Now watch this. Let me get to the verse of choice for today. Ah, yeah. Hebrews, Hebrews, Hebrews. I want to go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. Hebrews chapter 6, verse 1 through 8. We're talking foundations. And what I need to establish in you is that God has to do it through you. Because you cannot walk this life as a believer in your own strength. Listen, I'm setting you up to kill your flesh. Your flesh can't do it. Your flesh can't do it. You ain't got enough to do it in yourself. And what we've got to do is become very clear and distinct on when it's me and when it's God. Can I tell you this? Your doubt, that's you. Faith, that's him. <laughs> gossip, that's you. Word, I mean, words, gossip, that's you. Words of encouragement, that's him in you. Belittling, that's your flesh. Building up, that's his spirit. Moving through you. You got to know the difference. You got to know the difference, people of God. You got to know the difference. Hebrews 6, chapter, uh, Hebrews chapter, chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. God, I'm just getting to the context for the day. I'm not going to get too much of it. I can see that now. It's already 631. But here's the context that preferably we will get to part of today and hopefully maybe part of tomorrow. I don't know. Tomorrow's lessons day. It's mama's day. Amen. Watch this. Hebrews 6, verse 1 through 8. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation, the foundation of, not, not laying again the foundation of repentance unto dead works and of faith toward God. Watch this. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, 
let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from the dead work from dead works and faith toward God. Now watch this. I want to deal with this for a second because this is going to really mess with your mind for a moment. And I, I, I want I want to uh uh I I, I want to uh this is going oh God this is going to mess with you a little bit because see this is going to be um uh, this is going to be challenging. Let me read this to you. I'm going to read this to you from a couple different versions because I want this to start to sink into you. Let, let's look at this from the Amplified Version. Just verse 1. I can't even deal with the whole context yet because my time is gone. But look at this context. Verse 1. Therefore, I mean verse 1, Amplified. Let a, therefore, let us go on and get past the elementary stage in the teachings of the doctrine of Christ the Messiah, advancing steadily toward completeness and perfection that belong to the spiritual, that belong to spiritual maturity. Let us not again be laying the foundation of repentance and abandonment of dead works or dead formalism and of faith by which you turn to God. Listen, oh God, you watch this. Let me ask a question. Let me ask you this question. I remember, I remember, I remember, I remember we were, we were, we were, when I, my, 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 my former pastor, Dr. Willie Washer III, and my, my great friend and, and still a father to me in ministry, we, we were cleaning up our neighborhood down in, in Greater Washington Park. That's it, Bishop. We got to grow up in him. We were cleaning up our neighborhood down in Greater Washington Park. And we were in the midst one day of a construct, a deconstruction project. And the guy was there with the crane. He was tearing down build the building. And it started raining. And uh and we noticed that 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 the that that uh uh the rain was getting so bad till we had to stop work, right? And so Basically, the foundation and part of the front of the house was still standing, and three of the walls were, were torn out. We had one wall and a piece of a wall still standing, but the rain was so bad till we had to stop construction. So we took a break for a minute. We come back, watch this, and 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 and, and a particular individual who was, um, you know, at that point in their life, caught up in drug addiction. They were they were caught up in drugs. They had come to the same house that was being deconstructed. There was nothing but foundation there and the wall and a little piece standing, but they were standing under that trying to do drugs and take cover with three walls torn down. Now that was, that's a terrible picture. That's a terrible picture. They were so in a drug inundated state trying to get their high and get their drugs that they didn't care that they were standing in a building that only had the floor or the foundation and a, two pieces of a wall, they just wanted to get high. Can I tell you that some believers are living like that now? What sense does it make to have a building with a foundation only? If we got to still keep going over the basics of you got to love people and you ought to have mercy and you ought not do this and you ought not do that, if we still got to stay in almost a law-based mode to get believers to understand Christ, then we're not maturing. We're not maturing. And some of us as believers are living on nothing but foundation, the very basics, and we've yet to build a true house. We've yet to mature in Christ. I mean, really, it's raining outside right now. You know what happens if you rain and the foundation's not set yet? Lenard Rogers can tell you this. If it starts raining, for a concrete man that lays foundation, rain is an enemy. Because guess what? Rain will keep the foundation from setting. You can't have it raining, or you can't even have the ground too moist when you lay foundation. Watch this. But likewise, once the foundation's been laid and it solidifies, it's just as ineffective if you never build on it. 
you'll just have a big solid block of concrete sitting there dead and lifeless. And some of us as believers are living in such fashion because we don't want to we don't want to grow up in Christ. We won't study our word. We won't we won't we won't pray. We won't allow God to use us. We, we don't take time to do the things. Watch this. We don't take time to do the things that would cause us to grow up into lively stones to build the house. To build the house and watch this. You are a part of the ecclesia, the called out ones. Jesus said, upon this rock, this foundation, I will build my church. So right now, watch this, watch this. Can I, oh, thank you, God, for the revelation. Watch this. Right now, we are in a construction project. In this very moment, we are in a construction project. God is using the word of God to build your life and mature you right now. But if you get off this call and go right back to being nasty and hateful and doing the silly things, you negate what he just built into you. Right now, we're building, watch this, come on somebody, oh God, you got to see this. Right now, we're building skyscrapers and houses in the same space. Right now, we're building apartment complexes and whole neighborhoods in the same space because each of us are at different places in our spiritual walk, but yet construction continues on each of our lives. Watch this. Some of us got a building to get the foundational principles into us. Others of us to other people. It's called spiritual maturity. <sighs> Therefore, let us go on past the elementary stage in the teachings of the doctrine of Christ. Listen, let me tell you something. Let me ask you this. Do you ever think you'll ever get to know all of Christ? All of the doctrine of Christ? I mean, if God is infinite and eternal, we will ever be coming to know him. Even in our glorified state, we won't get all of God. He's just too big for that. The creation will never ever get all of the creator. So there's always room for building in each of us. I don't know all the scriptures in the dang gone Bible. I don't know every doctrine. I learned from, from, from Leonard Rogers. I learned from the Sheila Garrett, other people. Why? Because I'm, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, we had a little break there, but my point was that, that, that I learned from all these people because I'm being built even as I'm a builder. Every lead, it's, 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 what, it's what my apostle tells us to remain teachable. Every teacher must remain teachable. And so we got to move away from the elementary things and start advancing, moving toward completeness and perfection, which belong to the spiritually mature. Some of the stuff that you wrestled with when you met Christ, you ought not be wrestling with now. You ought be mature enough to be a teacher in some areas of the spiritual walk and not always need to be taught. But foundational to it all is that Christ must be moving in and through you. I got to get out of here. Um, 2247 Two two four seven is our um, is our um, reference number for today. If you need to get it by phone, you can dial seven one two seven seven five seven zero nine nine. That's seven one two seven seven five seven zero nine nine. Access code seven eight nine one one one, and then in your reference of two two four seven, you can also get it as always in our Impact app under Inspire AM or Today's Word. And likewise, you can get it under our, our video section, which connects to our YouTube channel. And you can uh, pick up this video or simply come back to this broadcast. Listen, support the ministry. Um, cash app, um, uh, dollar sign seed more, S-E-E-D-M-O-O-R-E. -E -E. Um, I enjoy laboring with you. I ask you to continue to support the work of the ministry. Um, that's cash app, 
dollar sign seed more s e e d m o o r e and then if you'd like to um, order books um, dollar sign order k l m m that's two m's order k l m m and so on tomorrow we'll be coming back with another lesson that mama has taught me and uh, and we'll share that on tomorrow and prayerfully it will be a blessing to your life thank you for your support mother Maud's going to pray now and uh, and we're going to be uh, done for today's session of Inspire AM. Listen, share the broadcast too. Share it. I don't care if you just got on the call. Share the broadcast. Do a watch party. Do a watch party at midnight. You never know who's going to hit your page and really need a word. But let's keep ever growing, ever learning, and ever increasing. God bless you. Mother Maud, lead us in prayer. Thank you, Father God. Lord God, I come to you this morning in the name of Jesus for the glory of God. Jesus of your word. I'm so, we are so blessed to be able to come before you early this morning. Glory to God. I thank you. Glory to God for the teaching that has gone forth. Oh, you've opened up our on. Hey, listen, fam, man. Thank you guys so much for being online with me. Uh, I don't take it lightly. I know it's early in the a.m., but man, I bless God for you. Um, man, this one, listen, uh, from time to time, I'm going to do what's called white pages. I'm going to do a white page from this 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 broadcast and a white page is simply just um, the written the written context of what we did. I, I, I believe this word today can inspire preachers and teachers to preach more word and to share more word based on this word today. And it's not because it's me. It's because it's Christ. And I want to further the gospel. I think today is a white page day. I need to do a white page from this one and let's get this out um, to us in written form. Um, um, send a like up if you like this in written form. Um, I need to get this out today. I really believe this would be beneficial to us to get this out in written form today. And so I'm going to do my best to get um, this word today transcribed as quickly as possible um, and get this word out from today's broadcast in white pages. Um, I think it's going to help you. Okay, so we love you. Um, this is very fundamental, but I praise God for you. Listen, we love you. Have a great day. Be inspired, be lifted, and let's go manifest.